Guys, helmets on. Now these are decked out with two cameras, one that shows your point of view and the other one that swings around and points at your face so that we can see all the fear in your eyes. Are you feeling calm? No. <laughs> no, but I will. I'll try my best uh -huh. to calm down, but no, I don't think so. <laughs> Strangely enough, I think I'm feeling more nervous than you because I've been up there and it's quite treacherous, so yeah. be safe and <laughs> enjoy yourselves. Cool. <laughs> that is such a nervous laugh. <laughs> See you very, very shortly as you walk through the fence, mate. Copy that. Somewhere straight ahead of me is basically a huge big V. It's a gorge and it goes right up into the hills, up into the Waitakere Ranges. You get such a strong sense of the land here, but also at the same time, it's full of tragedy, bloodshed and death. Ah, oh, charming. Mmm, creaky floors. People have been heard playing pool in the middle of the night and there's actually been nobody in here. Which is kind of strange. I'm walking up to the Farapu Gorge. The hikers that were walking up there were, felt some sort of eerie presence behind them. They got at their camera and they took a photo, and it had the sort of demonic mask uh, that could be seen in the background. So I'm heading up to there now. Brad, can you hear me? I've just crossed the first stream. When the Orpheus went down all those years ago, the... the beach went as far up as pretty much where you went through that fence. And the strange thing about that was they only ever found around about 50 bodies. And one would presume that a lot of those got washed up on shore and, you know, up into areas where you are right now. Brad, you, you're cutting out, man. I can hardly hear you. Now I'm about to head into the old homestead of the Gibbons. This is the lounge room here. And this is where the apparition of the pink lady has been seen a few times by the owners and people who have stayed. Funnily enough, actually, during the day, most of them. There's Nicholas and Matilda Gibbons. The thing is, it's children that quite often see the pink lady. She has an affinity with children, apparently. bedrooms where she's also been spotted even a couple of weeks ago actually one of the little girls was staying here set up a picnic table you know how little girls have tea parties and her mum came up and asked her how, who the other setting was for and she said the old lady that wanders around here it's got such a sense of being oh I don't want to go down here I just heard a door move. Oh, I feel like there's always something behind me in this place. <laughs> now, there's a very sacred kauri tree just further up ahead that the, uh, the local Māori used to uh, use as like a, a fertility god. And apparently, some white settlers chopped the um, kauri tree down 
And it was said that the Māori, on hearing of this and knowing of this, they uh, declared utu, or revenge, on the, uh, on the white settlers. And that was the very eve of the Orpheus disaster. So, payback? This is room number 14. Now in this room, a lady was staying here. She had a strange experience in this room, basically where she felt like she was being sucked in through time and it started getting quite wavy around her. And it basically lasted for about 30 seconds, she said, where it just felt like she was being sucked into another era in time. 30 seconds. strange, it's really quite peaceful, but at the same time, you kind of feel that there's something watching you. Is there any spirit out there? Or anything out there that... I just heard something then. Is there anything out there? Is there anybody out there? Carolyn? Can you go back into the lodge if that's okay? No. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I'm not asking, I'm telling. Tell me why. One of my remote thermometers just had a substantial temperature drop. Oh, crap. <sighs> Which part of the lodge? Well... It seems to be around the pool table and the and the piano. 